Here's a subject that's been arising quite a bit lately through one-on-one -on -one conversations or just some of the chats via social media. And it is best described as hesitation. Before we get into that, we can look at resistance. We can look at avoidance. And you've probably already realized or recognized that they're essentially the same thing. It's all about keeping us removed from the moment, keeping us removed from what seems to be a barrier, a sense of difficulty, the ego's way of protecting us from that which it cannot feel but deems completely dangerous. Resistance and avoidance are essentially the same thing. It's the same mechanism at play. So when we step into hesitation, it's just adding another layer on top of resistance or avoidance. And so if we can pay attention to how that works, we can see that that extra layer puts us into a meta position. Something strange about a distraction from the present. Every single thought seems to arise as a reflective instance. We can see that the way the brain or the mind perceives energy is through thought, and it's actually a pretty slow process. That processing, that buffering kind of puts us a little bit further in the past, and then if we add another layer through the attention that we give to the conceptual space, we buffer again, and add another layer, we buffer again. And we see how this shows up quite a bit, pretty much in every area of the way the identity adds and we can see how this begins to show up in pretty much every mechanism of the identity. One example is resistance itself. Early on in the path, a lot of people will encounter resistance and then have some sort of strategy in place. And then they move their attention into doing something because of the notice of resistance. And as soon as something is done, they find themselves in a buffered place. They are doing something other than resistance, and that is just a, another form of resistance. So we resist the resistance. We might resist that resistance, resisting the resistance, so on and so forth. And it just kind of buffers us into this past place, this place of something that is just reflecting a reflection. Or, as we can put it, it's a hall of mirrors. This also can show up a lot when it comes to judgment. Even if it's an external judgment out here or an internal judgment about some sense of self, we notice a judgment and sometimes when we notice that judgment, we judge ourselves for judging. Same kind of mechanism at play. We judge ourselves for judging and then we judge that judgment, judging, 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 and another buffer positioning itself in the past. This is really all about distracting from this moment. And supposedly it makes sense because the ego itself cannot perceive here and now. Because there's no way to orient to this. The way that form and emptiness and form and emptiness and all these different combinations of things arise, it just cannot be perceived by the two-dimensional binary mechanisms of the identity itself. And so it's pretty clever in the ways that it keeps us distracted with anxiety and a fear of some future moment, which is still just a reflection of it positioning itself deeply in the past. And every time we reach a buffer or meta experience and it pushes us deeper in the past, we find ourselves deeper in a conceptual space, a conceptual hole, if you will, almost a vortex of thought energy. And yes, of course, thought energy and sensations are the same, yet the interpretation is what kind of gets us in trouble. So, now let's look at hesitation. Seems as if hesitation is a dilemma mechanism. And anytime there's a dilemma, that will surely keep us busy. It will surely keep us from feeling into the sensory space that allows us to be anchored into here and now. And we're saying anchored loosely. 
because of course we're always here now and there's clearly a part of us that's always aware of that most of this practice most of this dharma if you will is about reconvening with that aspect of ourselves our truest nature that which has never been perturbed from this present moment so when hesitation arises, the mechanism seems to be an oscillation between resistance and avoidance. And what seems to happen is there's another layer of buffering on top of that. So the resistance comes up and then the avoidance comes up and then the resistance and avoidance. And then we end up in a space of, well, do I resist? Do I avoid? Do I resist? Do I avoid? And what that does is it kind of puts us in a state of what seems to be paralysis it keeps us in a holding pattern keeps us in a place of feeling stuck yet it also doesn't allow us to be in a state of now that is free-flowing and effortless it's a buffer we're putting ourselves in this position and similar to a belief it seems to anchor itself or seems to solidify itself in a way that says this is a permanent state got to make the right choice here the lemmas are interesting in this way and truly the best recommendation one can give when it comes to dilemma is if one finds themselves in a dilemma often carry a coin in the pocket because if it's really that much of a dilemma it doesn't matter which choice is chosen there is no right choice this is where hesitation really likes to pit us into a deep past well if i do this this could go wrong if i do this this could go wrong so on and so forth it's this projection of past experience to protect ourselves from a future experience there is no future there is no future there is just this and whatever we can do to break the pattern of holding and being stuck there's a benefit there. So let's look at that even closer. Carry a coin in the pocket if you find yourself in dilemma all the time. And as mentioned before, it's probably better to explore this with low stakes situations first, because we can often lead to pretty intense destabilization if we start breaking the pattern too intensely. Yet, if you find yourself in a state of dilemma, when you go out to eat, when you go to your coffee shop, and you're not sure what you want to get, bring a coin. Take the coin out of your pocket, flip that coin, and just go with the choice that the coin is giving us. There's a lot of ancient traditions, in fact, that use this type of chance or fortune, if you will, to allow us to kind of move forward and to stay out of a stuck pattern. Some of you may have heard of I Ching. I Ching is all about decision making. And it's essentially flipping of the coin. It's a bunch of flipping of the coin, yet it's it's the same. So to really Americanize this, to really make this simple, grab yourself a coin and flip that coin if you find yourselves in the midst of a dilemma. Just recently, someone working with me decided that they weren't sure if they wanted to stay in their relationship or not. And it was that intense of a dilemma. It was that much of a hesitation. And the most natural thing to say or to point in that situation was just flip a coin. If it really seems like it could go either way, the motion forward, the motion of being free from the dilemma might allow us to step outside of that past buffer and into the moment. And I know that sounds like a pretty high stake situation. Yet when we look at it that way, when we look at our dilemmas in a way that if we flip a coin and we just go with what the coin tells us, then maybe we are willing at that point to move outside of this experience that some people would call analysis paralysis. To be paralyzed in this way, to allow hesitation to come up constantly, 
keeps us in a holding pattern and that pattern is just simply going to be painful. It's always going to have an element of suffering to it. If we can step outside of hesitation, if we can continue moving forward, we get a little bit more direct with our experience. We become aware of resistance as resistance arises. This perceived boundary, this perceived area of preference. We become aware of avoidance as it arises. This perceived need to escape, this perceived need to move away from that which seems potentially painful. Yeah. Pretty powerful stuff. And as mentioned before in Living on the Edge video, we spoke of just sitting in that particular place where it seems to be uncomfortable. Turn over every leaf, every stone. See if there's really a boundary there. Is there something actually preventing us from being right here, right now? Because the closer we get to this moment, there is just something effortless that carries us. We're made for this, truly. We're made for this effortless free flow. It's just something that is naturally built in. Our truest nature speaks. So when hesitation arises, really sit with it. If it seems like it is so compelling and overpowering, then carry a coin. Flip that coin and just go with the choice that the coin seems to have decided for you. In a way, we can say it's a form of tapping into intuition. Hesitation, once hesitation is moved beyond, and we get a little bit more direct, we start to have more insights. There's nothing worth hesitating over at all. In fact, if you look at it scientifically, hesitation is deadly. Instead of allowing ourselves to have an instinctual motion, if we move into hesitation in a situation that might be emergent or there might be actually clear and present danger, if we allow ourselves to become hesitant against which is a natural instinct, that can actually end up in tragedy. Some of those videos where you see maybe a car falling on a kid and the mom immediately moves into action, that is instinct. There's no hesitation there. She picks up the car and her kid becomes free. The superhuman strength, on the other hand, inexplicable. Pretty amazing. Hesitation is just an oscillation between avoidance and resistance. And if we can move beyond that hesitation, we're getting more direct with that experience. And then we can sit just in hesitation or we can sit just within avoidance and we can discover what it's really telling us. It's likely saying, I don't like the sensation that seems to be paired with these thoughts. It's really that simple. And just because it's simple doesn't make it easy, yet still, to sit in that which is utterly simple, you might begin to find a lot more insight. Maybe you can experiment with that a little bit. Where do you hesitate? Is it a pattern of hesitation? And if so, are you willing to run some experiments? Will you carry a coin in your pocket so that any time hesitation arises in this habitual way, you can continue moving forward. You might discover something pretty amazing here. And I'd love to hear about it. So, as always, please um, interact with us in the comments and be right there with you.